Um, so did you have an opportunity to perform an autopsy on Samantha Josephson? Yes, sir, I did. All right. And uh, in the process that you talked about, that was what you followed as you uh, performed that uh, autopsy, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Um, so tell us, let's start with photographs. Um, you said you normally take photographs. Did you do that here? Yes, sir. Approximately how many photographs did you take? Uh, 170 photographs. Okay. Why so many? Um, well, there were a lot of injuries. Okay. And uh, x-rays, I was just mentioning. Um, did you take x-rays? Yes, sir. Okay. How many? I took 13 x-rays. Why is that? So um, we take x-rays um, in the case of gunshot wounds as well as stab wounds. And so I had initially seen sharp force injuries, stab wounds. So that makes me think that I need to take x-rays in this case. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for um, perhaps pieces of the knife that have broken off. When the knife hits bone, um, it, it will either bend or break. Um, so many so, times... So you're saying steel will bend or break if it hits a bone? Yes, if there's enough force applied and the knife blade is uh, not, a, not sturdy enough, it will, it, will bl it will bend or else uh, maybe the tip will break off. When the tip breaks off, we can match that to a weapon if we recover it. Now, as Ms. Josephson uh, was presented to you on, uh, in March of 2019, uh, what was her uh, body weight and height? Yes, yeah, she was uh, 69 inches tall and she weighed 160 pounds. All right. And you alluded to some of this a moment ago. Um, when she presented to you, um, what was it that you saw that grasped your immediate attention? Um, the, 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 there were two things first. The first thing was that she had an extensive amount of in insect activity on the surface of the body. And the second thing, pretty much at the same time, was that she had many stab wounds uh, over the surfaces of the body. Now, you talked a moment ago about, um, you said, sharp force injuries? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, t explain to the jury um, how you characterize sharp force injuries. So in, in the universe of injuries for forensic pathologists, things are either blunt force or sharp force. And sharp force injuries are broken down into two types. Uh, incised wounds, which are um, wounds that are longer than they are deep. So these would be, some people might refer to them as a scratch or a cut. And then there are stab wounds, and the stab wounds are deeper than they are wide or, or long. So these are wounds that uh, where the knife has gone in, um, there's made a little cut in the skin, but the, de the blade has gone deeper into the body. So... Um, Would some people call those puncture wounds? Puncture wounds, yes. Stab wounds. Um, we, so I won't know, when I first see a, a sharp force injury, I won't know whether it's classified as a stab wound or a, uh, an incised wound until I, I probe the wound and see how deep it goes. And when you probe the wound, explain to the jury what you mean by probing a wound. So I have a, a metal probe that um, it's like a thin piece of metal. And, um, and I put that into the wound. and I try to follow the path of the wound. And then um, and I mark the spot on the skin with my fingers by glass, grasping it. And when I pull it out, I can then match it to a ruler. And I can see exactly how far the, the uh, probe went in. Now, again, you captured all of these um, 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 things that you did by way of taking photographs, is that correct? Yes, sir. And would that assist you um, in, uh, in explaining to the jury uh, you know, what you observed and, why, and, uh, and, and your findings as a result of uh, what you observed? Yes, sir. Right. Now, I'd like to um, first begin by showing you a series of pictures. Um, and you, you talked about um, just kind of the methodology you use. Um, as you perform this autopsy, um, did you, because of the number of stab wounds, as you mentioned, did you do, do them in groupings? Did you try to group them differently than you normally would? Yeah, yes, sir. Once it, it, the number gets up around 100, um, it it's really makes the autopsy report and any description very bulky, so I try to group them where they're closely together and, and, and related. So, yes, I, I'll group them into groups of five or six or eight um, in a certain area. And uh, you mentioned the number 100. Were you able to count the number of stab wounds as you uh, observed uh, Ms. Joseph's body? 
Yes, um, it, it's over 100, I think somewhere around 120. But it uh, gets to a point where it's not really, it doesn't really add much to the report. Colton, 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 Colton. Yes. Now, let's, um, for purposes of, of uh, just organization, I prefer to go, let's go head to toe okay. so that we can talk about some of these matters. Uh, I'm going to show you, and, uh, and at this point I'll show them to you. Um, you can, in my question to you, I'm just going to explain the process to make sure we're clear. Um, do not show these to the jury as I show them to you. I want you to tell me if you, uh, if you uh, recognize them first, then we'll talk about them before we do any publishing of any pictures. Is that I understand. I understand. All right. So, Your Honor, I'm going to approach the witness. Uh, Mr. They are three states, three forty seven, states, three forty six, states, three forty two, and states, three forty one. Repeat that for me, please. I'm sorry. Three forty seven. 341, yes, and um, it's a photo taken at autopsy. The body is in the uh, supine position. What is supine position? It means uh, face is up. Fa face is up in supine, and then prone, the face would be down. But she's laying on her back in this particular photograph. Yes, sir. And um, we're showing a close-up of the uh, left side of her face. At the bottom of the frame is her left ear. Uh, towards the left side of the frame is her chin. Um, the eye and eyebrow are towards the upper right corner. And what we see in the center of the frame is her cheek. And on the cheek are a number of parallel uh, cutaneous defects, which I would describe as abrasions. And they're, they're abrasions that you would get if the body was dragged. You used the word, a term of art, cutaneous. Uh, what is cutaneous? Um, cutaneous is just the skin, and um, so you're seeing scratches on the skin, is what you're suggesting? Yes, sir. I'm seeing scratches on the skin, and they're they're parallel scratches. So um, it, I think that that the scratching surface that's a, that's scratching your skin is um, going in one direction, all going in one direction. Okay, and that suggests the person's being dragged. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Now let's look at, um, again, not pub publishing to the jury yet, um, let's look at the next picture um, of um, so now I'm report yeah, and explain again that um, exhibit number and tell us what you see in that picture. Yes, sir. I I'm looking at exhibit number 342, 342. and um, this is uh, another picture taken at the time of autopsy. Uh, again, the body is in the supine position. It's a close-up photo and it shows the right side of the head. To the extreme uh, right lower corner is the right ear. Um, towards the left side of the frame is the top of the head. Um, towards the extreme uh, upper 
right corner of the frame is the nose. And so in the center of the frame, we're looking at um, the right side of the forehead, the right eye, and right eyebrow. And so uh, what is it of, uh, did you notice any defects uh, to Ms. Josephson in those pictures? Oh, yes, sir. There's many. Now, explain to the jury another term of art what a defect is. So um, a defect would be anything uh, done to the skin that is um, not part of a normal process. So um, if I uh, cut myself shaving, that would be a defect that I created. So um, it can be an abrasion from a, a rubbing on the skin. It could be a stab wound. It could be a bruise. Um, it could be a burn. So a defect is a very generic term for a number of different uh, injuries that might have occurred to the skin. So explain to the jury the defects, just uh, without the picture, without the visual, which you can point to yourself if that will help at the moment, the defects that you observed when you uh, performed this autopsy on Ms. Josephson, based on State's Exhibit number 342. Yes, so she has um, uh, bruising over the forehead and the right side of her face. She has a stab wound in the eyebrow. She has a number of other stab wounds on the right side of the face. And now, may, I, may I interrupt you for a moment? You said a stab wound to the eyebrow. Yes, sir. Okay, so a moment ago you mentioned you take x-rays, correct? Yes, sir. And one of the reasons you take those, as you said, was to see if there may be uh, damage to a, a weapon, to a knife? Yes, sir. That's, this uh, is pr the primary reason. When I saw these stab wounds to the head, the skull is a very hard bone, very thick, and stabbing the skull frequently results in the knife bending or breaking. And so um, it immediately alerted me to take x-rays because we might have a piece of the knife actually embedded in the skull. Thank you, sir. Please continue. <clears throat> so I find that um, she also has a, a, an abrasion on the corner of the eye, and as I said, some bruising. Um, the right eye is somewhat uh, collapsed, and that's um, probably from some trauma to it. And, um, that's, and then there's hemorrhaging to the periorbital tissues, the tissues around the eye. It's got a black eye, basically. Um, now let's talk about that word you just mentioned, is there hemorrhaging. Um, is there a way to determine if wounds take place if a person is living or post-mortem when they're dead? Yes, sir. Okay, yes. explain uh, that in uh, uh, extra vacated, I believe is the term that, that, that's used often. But explain those uh, terms to the hemorrhaging versus extravasated to, uh, to the jury, if you would, please. Sure. So hemorrhaging, hemorrhage is an active process, and it requires a blood pressure. So when the person's alive, their heart's beating, they have a blood pressure. So all the blood vessels in the body are under a pressure, um, and the blood flows. Um, extravasated means that the blood has drained out of the blood vessel. So if we, if we cut, um, say, um, a blood vessel and there's no blood pressure, blood will still drip out of it, but it's not under any kind of force. There is no hemorrhage going on. But if the person's got a blood pressure and you cut the blood vessel, then the blood will, pour, will, will squirt out. It will, it will be forcefully expelled from the blood vessel by the blood pressure. So it would kind of be like, um, if, the, if you had a hose and um, the water was turned off and you cut the hose, you would expect a few drops of water to come out of the cut, but it wouldn't be much. If the hose was turned on and you cut it, then you would expect the, the water to come out forcefully. That's the difference between extravasated and hemorrhage. All right. And so in this case, you said hemorrhaging? Yes, sir. She has hemorrhage. Okay. So which suggests she was alive when these wounds were inflicted? Yes, sir. All right. So please continue as you were describing state's exhibit number 342. Um, there are also some uh, wounds um, in the hair that we can see. And when I saw these wounds, I felt around in, in the hair. She has thick hair. And um, I could feel other wounds. So um, at that point, I know I'm going to have to remove some of the hair to get a good look at the wounds. Did you do that in this case? Yes, sir, I did. And once you removed the hair, explain to the jury what you saw just verbally. Explain what you saw. So behind, uh, on the right side of the head, behind and kind of above the right ear, 
there were multiple uh, stab wounds. Um, did you see anything else of interest in uh, States 342 that you need to explain to the jury verbally? Uh, no, sir, I think that's all. Okay. Now let's turn to uh, the next exhibit. Tell us uh, again, uh, just identify it. Uh, do not publish it to the jury at the moment. Um, what's the next picture you have in front of you? Yes, sir, I'm, I'm looking now at uh, 346, 346. So States 346. Take a look at that. Do you recognize that picture? Yes, sir, I do. Um, tell, us, tell us what you see there. Okay. Um, it's uh, another picture taken at the time of autopsy. And uh, again, she's in the supine position. Um, this is not as close up as the other photos. And um, at the top of the picture is the um, case number that we put in the photos. And it's the unique identifier that we try to get in all the pictures. Um, the photo itself shows uh, uh, her top of her head to the left side of the frame and um, her right shoulder at the extreme right lower corner. Um, the the uh, number placard partially obscures her face, but in the center of the photo, we can see her right ear and um, part of the right side of her head. We can see the area that I shaved it off the hair so we could look at the injuries there. We also see a number of injuries to the right side of the neck. Um, um, also in this picture behind the right ear, I've placed a letter, an adhesive letter, that's part of how we um, keep track of the wounds. What letter is on there? Uh, it's letter L. Okay. And what does that signify, the letter L in this case? Um, that that uh, so far I've gotten to the letter L. So I start at A, I have a, a sheet of these letters, and I just peel and stick them. It's there. It's just a peel and stick thing, and I will stick them on where the wounds are. And so... So sequentially, if you went, I guess, or maybe I guess that's probably numerically, um, you went A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. L, So this yes. is the L stab wound is what we're speaking about. Yes, we're on L now. At this, this particular photograph shows us the L that I put there. And... Um, all the wounds either got their own individual letter or the grouping of wounds got a letter and then it was photographed. And that's so that if somebody wants to talk about these wounds, they can say, well, I'm talking about letter L. And then we can all look at the picture and know that this is where, this is the wound. Um, also in this wound, in this picture is a probe. Part of what I mentioned before about determining the depth of the wound is place a probe in the wound, and then, um, and then that way we are able to tell the depth of this wound and its approximate path. Can you show the jury on, on yourself? Can you point to the area uh, on yourself where that probe is placed? Yes, it's right uh, kind of below and behind the ear, right here. I don't know if that's... And so if the record could reflect that uh, Dr. Beaver's pointing behind his um, left ear, kind of where the skull and the neckline meet, is that correct? Yes. And did you measure that probe at some point? Um, yes. Okay, how deep was that wound? Um, I'd have to look at my report, but I believe it was about four centimeters. Okay. Do you have the report with you? Yes, sir, I do. Would it help your recollection to take a look at that? Yes, it would. Please. It probes to a depth of 3.6 3 centimeters. Okay. Can you show us just kind of with your fingers about 3.6 centimeters is? Yes, sir. I think it's about that far. All right. And what type of damage would a wound that goes 3.6 centimeters, excuse me, did you say centimeters? No. Centimeters, yes. Centimeters sir. into the area that you just showed. What type of effect could that have based on your medical experience? Yes, it can go into the skull and into the brain, and that would, that would be a serious wound. Okay. Life-threatening? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Any additional um, things that you'd like to point out as it relates to states 346 at this point? Uh, no, no, sir. Okay. Now, if you'll take a look at, I believe that states 347 with the same um, um, instructions, just take a look at it and tell us verbally what you see. Yes, sir. I'm looking now at uh, 347, 347. Okay. And um, this is a picture, um, again, taking an autopsy, very similar to the last one, um, showing the right side of her head and neck. Um, towards the top of this frame is her nose. Towards the left side is the top of her head. Towards the right side is her, um, uh, the base of her neck. And um, what I'm doing in this photograph is I'm holding the ear forward so we can see behind the ear. Um, there is a stab wound that actually goes through the ear and then ends up um, going into the skin behind the ear. And so to demonstrate that, I've pulled the skin forward. We can see the L that I said previously that designates this wound. The, actually another wound. The ones behind the ear are different. But um, uh, so uh, that's what we're seeing here. And we also see the stab wounds to her neck. Courts and dogs. Your Honor, I'd like to have States Exhibits 341, 342, 346, and 347 admitted into evidence at this point. They're, they're marked for identification at this time. And I'd like to ask, have them uh, entered into evidence at this time, Your Honor? They're identification okay. only at this time. Yes, sir. And did you take these these photos? Yes, sir, I did. Were they taken in a normal course of business? Yes, sir. Oh. Now let's look at, I'm going to start giving you, uh, let's talk a little bit more after we talk about the neck and the head. Um, let's talk about the torso next. So I'm going to hand you uh, just a series of pictures at this point in time. You know, Show you exactly which ones these ones are. Okay. All right. 
So which, uh, which number you, you have in front of you, sir? So I'm going to start with um, uh, uh, states 356, I believe it is. Can the witness step down here? And you can bring that photo with you. Now, looking at uh, states <coughs> three fifty six. All right. Explain to the jury. To, let's turn this way so you face the court reporter, and I'll hold it to tell the jury what you're seeing here. So this photo uh, taken at the time of autopsy. No. We'll have to rotate around a little bit. We may need to walk so each of you can see. And uh, the bottom is on the placard. This is the placard I was talking about earlier, 275 uh, sort of number. Um, then we're looking at her back. And now she's rolled up on her side. So um, so we're looking at the left side. That's being her left arm at the top and her right shoulder at the bottom. And um, we have cleaned her up. Oh, excuse me. We have cleaned her up. So we washed off uh, the blood and things like that that might have obscured the injuries. But we still see a lot of um, of, of these. This sort of the skin is sort of uh, abraded off. And this these yellow sort of yellow waxy looking things. That's all insect activity. So that's from ant. And this specific insects are ants in this case. So ants have uh, taken and started to kind of um, uh, take off the superficial layers of her skin. Um, but there are also injuries here. And so we can see a stab wound here, a stab wound here, and a stab wound here, and a stab wound here. So she has, she has a number of stab wounds on, the, on what I would call the uh, flank area. So in this area of her back. Um, this, these wounds, um, uh, one of these goes actually into the lung. But then uh, the other ones don't penetrate any <coughs> internal organs. They go superficially, um, centimeter or two, but not, not into an internal organ. But the main thing is the insect activity. It's something to see there. You're going to have to see it. We're going to do this with each of the photos. OK. Would you like to this one? Yes, sir. Yeah, so yeah, take a look at the next torso um, photo that you'd like to take a look at. I think, um, yes, I, th I think this is, most of the rest are not torsos, so okay. I think this is the next one. All right, well, tell us, tell us what we're looking at, if, uh, if you'll show us, uh, and tell us what exhibit you're looking at. If, uh, so I am uh, looking at uh, 352, states 352, and this is a, a photo. This time the body is laying on its back, it's fine. So she's laying uh, on the table back. Um, we've got the placard in here with her. I, identifier and um, we're looking at the uh, abdomen here and her hand is kind of resting up on the abdomen. So um, we can see here some, in, some of that insect activity again on her wrist. So the insects, the ants in this case have done that. Um, then we can see the knuckles of her hand. She has a little defect right there on that knuckle which uh, it, it's indicative of uh, some type of uh, glow perhaps. Um, and then she has a little bit of, of discoloration in the knuckles, um, contusion, maybe. And if we can sit around this way for the room. Some devices like this Okay, so we have some swelling in the knuckles, maybe some discoloration, and we have this little defect here. Um, and then the rest of her torso looks okay to me. Um, and an indication of insect activity in her wrist. Would you could uh, take the next photo in the order that you'd like to go through this one? Sure. I think we'll just start here. So this one is uh, three, 343. Okay, so states 343. All right. So here. Um, we're looking at the arm, and uh, so first we have the insect activity I've been talking about, and then we have two uh, wounds here and here. So um, superficial wounds uh, where uh, 
Frog came in contact with a knife or sharp instrument cut there. And uh, so this is the back of the left arm. So I mean, this area here, uh, you can see your elbow here. And there's another injury here. So this one, two, three injuries on that arm. Um, and the yellow waxy material is postmortem from, from uh, ants. And let's take a look at the next photo. So now, uh, stage 349. Stage 349. Okay, explain to the jury what we're looking at here. So this um, uh, is the right shoulder and part of the right neck. So she's laying on her back, um, and the right shoulder is here in the center. Up to the uh, far right corner of the frame is her um, right ear, and um, some of the injuries on, on, on her right neck. But I'm going to come around you so we can make sure the jurors are able to see that. So, so what we have are um, a, a multiple stab wounds in this small area. So in forensic pathology, we like to think of things that are close together in space are close together in time. So um, these injuries would be um, from rapidly inflicting stab wounds because they're all very close together. Some of them are overlapping. And there's a couple in here that caught my attention um, almost immediately. And they're parallel. There are two parallel cuts. And we will see others like that. And that, to me, I said, I, that's unique. Um, it's, it's very difficult to put wounds exactly spaced apart and exactly parallel. And so um, it made me think that we were dealing with an odd weapon and that we would be able to identify this weapon. So, um, so this is the first real kind of clue I started thinking about is when I saw that right there. Yes, sir. And um, that made me start to think about uh, the type of weapon being perhaps not, perhaps not just a generic knife, but maybe now something unique. Um, so she has other wounds in her neck here. Um, but again, these are all grouped together. And I would group this as a single grouping of wounds because they're all in the same area. They're all about the same size. And um, they, they go into the musculature. Um, they're not going to be fatal by in and of themselves with medical treatment. They're not going to be lethal. Now, if you look again at state's exhibit number 349 that we've been referring to, um, do you, are you able to see any defects to her ear there? Um, yes, sir. So this one at the, at the far right, you can see um, there's a defect in the ear here. That, that's a stab wound that actually goes through the ear and into the neck from behind the ear. And uh, we were talking about a photo earlier where I tipped the ear forward. And that's, well, that was to see what the, that went through, actually went through the ear. What's the exact number of that? 349, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The same process. Would uh, would, would exhibit we're looking at? Uh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, this one is uh, 344. All right, 344. I'll hold that. So here we're looking at the body again, laying on the back. This time we're looking at the left arm. So we have the left arm and hand here, and um, the placard's in here. Uh, the uh, the arm is running across the frame and towards the bottom of the frame. And we can see the insect activity here, but she also has uh, two small wounds uh, on the forearm, and there's some hemorrhage into the soft tissues of the arm. Um, again, the wound's not lethal, but, um, but it just shows the level of, of uh, activity. Look at the next photo, please, sir. States number 350, 350. That's 
So this wound, this uh, photo, excuse me, um, you can see the peel and stick thing that I was talking about earlier. And uh, the placard is at the bottom. She is lying on her back on the table. And we're looking at the right arm here. Um, you can see one of the wounds that was up on the right shoulder or in the grouping of the right shoulder right here. Um, it's not a good angle photographically, so you could just see the discoloration of the skin. Um, and then you see a parallel, two parallel wounds in the elbow. So um, that to me, that was starting to, again, I'm starting to think about, at the time of the autopsy, I'm thinking these two parallel wounds to be that close together and parallel like that is um, very unusual and it's going to mean something. I just need to figure it out. Um, and then you can see the, her torso here. I don't see much there. Um, her hand would be off the frame to the bottom. Thank you, sir. Let's grab that next one. <laughs> So this photo, we're looking at the foot, and um, it's the right foot, and it's, she's laying on her back, and there are some stab wounds here. And here we see really well that two parallel stab wounds that I was talking about. And when I probe these wounds, excuse me, um, they run exactly parallel as well. So it's not like the knife went this way or this way, they're parallel in every respect. And so um, that's unique. And here I got the sense that there might be one and then two, but the, the knife didn't go very deep. So um, now I'm looking at um, this really being some type of a unique weapon. And then go. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any, anything else you'd like to yeah, discuss? There's, just, there's hemorrhage. You can see some pinkish discoloration around the wound, mm -hmm. and that is um, hemorrhage. So we know she's got a blood pressure at this point, um, and blood is being forced out into the skin around the wound once the blood vessels are cut. Thank you, sir. So now we're going to look at um, the right hand. So placards at the top. She's laying on her back. We're looking at the right arm. To the far right of the frame is about where her elbow starts. or the, um, um, And then to the uh, right of the frame are the tips of her fingers. And we're looking at this wound on the palm of her hand. So this is two parallel stab wounds small, exactly parallel, and they probe all the way through the hand. And they go side by side all the way through the hand. So what I'm, and there's hemorrhage around, so you know she has blood pressure at this point. Um, so there's a couple things to take away from this. First of all, it's a defensive type injury. Um, you're being attacked with a knife, you put your hand up to try to reflexively block that attack. And the knife goes through your hand. That's what happened here. And both of those wounds are parallel. They're the same kind of parallel, close together stab wounds that we saw on the foot and the shoulder. And here they're really, it's, it just, it's, it's a really good demonstration. So I took another photograph closer up. Would you get that one, please? Yes. Thank you. Oh, 
both of those yes, side sir. by side? Yes, sir. So we're looking at state's exhibit number 354 and 355. So take a closer uh, picture of the palm of the hand. We're looking at the palm of the right hand again. Um, towards the top would be her wrist, towards the bottom tips of her fingers. And these wounds are exactly two little cuts that are parallel to each other. And um, they're a set distance apart. They don't, doesn't vary. And they go all the way through the hand. So this wound is what you would expect for someone trying to defend themselves from a stab and, and the knife hits them. But in this case, the knife is, is, is unique because it's got these two blades. It would have to have two blades or two pieces to the blade that would be parallel. And um, so at this point, I, I, I knew we would find, if we could find a knife, we could match it up with this wound because there's just, and I actually went to Google and I looked at about a thousand pictures of knives and I couldn't find any knife that was like this, that had those kinds of parallel blades. Um, so, you want to look at the next one? Uh, yes, sir. So, we're going to look at the 353. Yes, sir. Three, 353. So 353 um, is the right hand again. This time we're looking at the back of the right hand. So remember I said that the wounds to the palm went all the way through and came out the back. And so now we're looking at where it comes out in the back. Um, and again, there are two parallel uh, wounds side by side. And so coming out like that, they would have to be, it would have to be two parallel blades. So we have the hemorrhage around it, so she has a blood pressure, and the wounds are exactly parallel, and they're that set distance apart. So um, that would take some kind of a unique instrument to do, do that. Are there all of those match points? I think I have one more. Okay. This is uh, 351, 351. So uh, here is the um, left arm, and um, it shows us the insect activity. Um, sometimes based on the positioning of the body and what the insects have access to um, can tell us something. So sometimes if a body is moved from one place to another, if the insects get on the body at one place and do damage some skin, and then the body is moved to another place where the insects don't have access that can tell us, help us to piece together what happened. So that's why this photo was taken. Um, there aren't any real significant injuries here, um, just the hand activity. So that's the um, left arm. So the pattern here is that all injuries are occurring on the right side of the body, right shoulder, the right side of the face and neck, down this right hand, left arm relatively spare. Can you offer an opinion as to what would happen for those major injuries to take place on the right side of one's body? That would be the um, side exposed to the attack. Could I have seen the jury box if you would, please? Now, sir, I'm going to show you what's been marked in state exhibit number 294. Yes, sir. Exhibit number 295. You referenced multiple times. Well, tell us what, you, what you're seeing with that, that interests you as you look at this. 
Um, this knife has uh, two, blet two blades, and um, they are relatively parallel. Uh, they are bent at the tip, and um, they are the size appropriate for the wounds that I saw. Um, this is this is a uh, this is this is the weapon. And as you look at this, based on your 29 years of the forensic pathology, do you have an opinion as to that weapon and the, the injuries that Samantha Josephson sustained? Yes, the, to, the parallel cuts are made by this. Now, did you see, may I have a uh, state number 225 back, please? Did you see some singular stab wounds as well? Yes, yes, and, and the many, in fact, the majority of the stab wounds were singular stab wounds. Let me hand that to you. So, speak, please speak to the jury. Yes, sir. So, once this is pulled apart like this, now it's a single bladed weapon. So, that's one of the things that was confusing me at the autopsy was I thought there must be two weapons because there was the parallel blade ones, and then there were the single ones. So I thought, it's unusual to have two weapons. But now, I think it's explained, it, it's explained to my satisfaction that this is the, this is the, the knife in this confirmation would make the parallel wounds that I saw, and then if it's in this confirmation, it could then make the single stab wounds. Thank you, sir. Now, as you perform this, uh, well, I was right that question. How much blood does the human body only contain? It's about about four or five liters. Four or five liters? Yes, sir. And so, in, uh, in U.S. metrics and American metrics, what is that? Uh, it's probably a, close to a gallon. Okay. And so, as you performed the autopsy on Ms. Josephson, how much blood was found in her body? It was not a lot. Um, I found 20 milliliters in the pleural cavity, right pleural cavity, and really um, we, had, we had difficulty obtaining the blood that we used for toxicology. All right. And so 20 milliliters is about how much, if you could, in, again in layman's terms, tell us what 20 milliliters yeah, maybe, looks like. Maybe. Uh, an eighth of a cup. Okay. So about this much? Yes, yeah, a couple right. tablespoons, maybe three. So based on the wounds that you saw and the fact that about five liters of blood should be in a human body, yes, where sir. would you expect the blood to be found in this type of um, activity, in this type of case? The, she's going to bleed out. She's going to bleed out, you said? Yes, sir. Okay. And, um, one of the neck wounds involves the carotid artery and the jugular vein. Mm -hmm. We haven't talked about it much, but, mm -hmm. but uh, that, that wound would produce a lot of blood flow. Okay. And you'd expect to find that blood where? Wherever, she, wherever it took place, wherever there were, these uh, wounds were inflicted. The blood would come out immediately, um, just like the hose analogy. All right. Now, you mentioned the neck wounds and the jugular, the jugular vein. Um, is there something called a hyoid bone? Yes, sir. Okay, let's talk to the jury about the hyoid bone and what you observed with that. Yes, sir. For a forensic pathologist, the hyoid bone is, has, has a great significance. Um, it's a little horseshoe-shaped bone. Literally, it would, it would fit inside my hand right here. And it sits up high in the neck. It and so if, you, if you'll just show us. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it sits us. up high in the neck. Yes, sir. And um, it's uh, hooked to the back of the tongue and to part of the larynx. And it's a free-floating bone. It doesn't have, it doesn't articulate with anything. It's not like an elbow or something. It's just, it's hinged by muscle. So there's muscle of the tongue on one side of it, muscle on the, on the throat on the other side of it. So, um, and for us, it's the sine qua non, that which names, of 
manual strangulation. So if you strangle somebody, you put your hands on their neck and you squeeze, um, that will fracture the hyoid bone. So when we see a fractured hyoid bone, it is manual strangulation until proven otherwise. Um, the bone, because it sits so high up in the neck, it's very punches and blows to the neck don't affect it. Because it's mobile and it's attached to muscle, again, blows to the neck generally don't affect it. You have to get that, you have to get that squeezing motion to fracture it. So um, she had a defect in her hyoid bone on the right side. In her case, though, I'm not of the opinion that it's a strangulation. I think it came from one of the stab wounds to her neck. The knife actually got up high enough to um, sever the hyoid bone. Um, so it's your suggestion in States Exhibit number 225, 295, this knife would have gotten high enough to sever that bone? Yes, sir. And so um, it doesn't say, it, it doesn't say for us that, for me, it doesn't say absolutely. I couldn't tell you absolutely there was no manual strangulation involved, but I can tell you I, I would favor the, that it was done by a knife, by the staff but it would be high to do because that bone is relatively protected. Um, even in ligature, when we see a ligature strangulation or someone committing suicide with a ligature, what's, the what's a ligature? I'm fracture. sorry. Explain what a ligature is. Oh, so if we put a, a rope around the neck, right. common, very common way people commit suicide, common way for people to attack each other. And even then, you don't see fractured hyoid bone because the, the ligature, the rope, or the wire, or the foam cord, slips up over the bone, or slips up underneath the bone, but it doesn't get the hyoid bone. So hyoid bone for a forensic pathologist is manual strangulation until proven otherwise. Right. And here you said there's a severed jugular? Yes, and carotid artery as well. All right, and so based on um, your 29 years as a forensic pathologist, are those wounds um, lethal wounds? Yes, sir. Okay, and so when we talk about the types of lethal wounds that you saw. We talked about an injury to the brain. Yes, sir. And we've talked about the injuries to the hyoid bone. Yes, sir. And the juggler. Uh, any or both of those could be considered lethal wounds? Yes. Okay. And the wounds that you saw consistent with stage number 295, the, the knife you talked about, do you have a, an opinion right now that you can tell this jury um, of what caused Samantha Josephson's death? Yes. Multiple stab wounds. I made the cause of death multiple stab wounds. Court's and Gentlemen, we're going to have you go to the jury room for <clears throat> a break now. Please do not discuss the case.